Hey everybody, I've got about eight packages here, so I think it's time to have a mailbag. Um, this one's got my address all over it, so um, I'm gonna slip this in here and we're just gonna try to get the thing out. Well, my address was all over that thing, so I'm just gonna tell you what it is. This is the Olimex uh, ESP32 PoE ISO, and uh, that PoE means power over ethernet. And so uh, all of these ESP32 boards have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it's pretty dang rare to find them with Ethernet. And uh, as I say a thousand times on this channel, if it matters, you should connect it with wires. And so this is my favorite go-to ESP32 board for industrial applications. So when I need something a little bit more than an Arduino, uh, this has got me covered. And what I love about this in any kind of industrial or business application, I can use the same ethernet jack to both power and provide data access to the board and uh it has some gpios now you'll notice it may have a few less gpio than some of the other boards and part of that is because you've got the built-in sd card slot you've got the um the uh ethernet taking up some space you've got the battery management taking up some space and so uh because of that you have a few less gpio pins but i've basically found that this is enough to do most of what I need to do. So this has the ESP32, which is way faster than an Arduino. It also has this, um, this they call it the UEXT port, and uh, I've got a UEXT cable here, just a standard straight through 10-pin um, ribbon cable, and you've seen that I've gotten some ribbon connector things in the mail and some ribbon cables and stuff like that. And the idea is that you can access some of the most important pins through something like this. So in other words, you can put your connectors into your box and disconnect this board without doing a whole bunch of DuPont wires. Uh, so you get access to 3.3 volts and ground and um, your I squared C and some of the GPIOs and stuff like that you can get to from there. As I said, it's got built in uh, SD card and these things just make really good industrial and connected um, devices. So I'm going to do a video about this specifically going forward. And uh, oh, I forgot to tell you the ISO part. This uh, there's some electrical isolation between the uh, power over Ethernet because you've got 48 volts coming in there uh, and the rest of the board. They do make one without that isolation, but in my environment, I want to have uh, as much electrical isolation as possible. So this is the ESP32 PoE ISO, and you can get it from DigiKey, Mauser, or um, if you're getting them in quantity, I get them straight from Olimex, which is located in Europe. But they work out being, you know, $25 landed here in the U.S., $25, $30. So um, anyway, that is the ESP32. Most of these things seem to have my address all over them, so we're going to go ahead and give this one a weird slice. This feels a little spongy in here, so let's see what we got. This is, still don't know what it is, still don't know what it is. Oh, fun, okay. Um, <clears throat> this, I, there's a couple different applications for these. These are um, basically sensors for listening through walls. And you can use them to find pipes. You can use them to find all different kinds of things. Um, it's basically like a stethoscope that is uh, electrical. And so the idea with this is you can put it up against the wall. You can put it up against a bike frame or a car part or something like that and listen to see, um, you know, to see what's rattling around and, and kind of prod around and figure out where something is rattling. Now, I don't remember if I got two of the same ones. I think I did. I think it basically worked out with... The shipping, um, the shipping didn't change when I ordered two, so essentially it made it come out to be a lot cheaper um, than just getting one. You know, so I, bought, I went ahead and bought two. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and charge these up. Maybe by the end of the video, I'll be able to give them a little bit of a test. So, and I actually don't know if they're rechargeable or not. And that, that there looks like it says recording. So I wonder if this thing actually gives any kind of data out. Um, it's pretty interesting. So yeah, we're gonna come back to these. Next up, we've got a relatively heavy one here from Amazon. Um, could be batteries. Yeah, it's batteries. Um, they do not let me link directly to these uh, with the Amazon affiliate links, but just in the shop, I go through a fair number of batteries, try to avoid doing more than I need to. But um, so I bought a 48 pack of these Amazon basics uh, batteries. And I've heard people say bad things about them, but for the most part, I think the reviews are pretty good. And, uh, 
and I like them. So the, the two I keep on stock are the, um, the AA and AAA. I use those all the time. So I keep some at the house, some at the shop. Uh, you know, remote controls and our little garage door opener thing seems to eat through batteries kind of no matter what, uh, you know, what model or what model batteries you use. But the one thing about these, I've never had them leak, which is huge. You know, the energizers and door cells of the world uh, have ruined quite a bit of electronics, but I've never had an issue with these leaking, and probably because I just always have fresh ones around. So, uh, Amazon basic batteries. Next up, we've got a module. See what kind of module this is. Still, oh, oh. Hmm. This might have gotten here way faster than I was expecting. Okay, so this is this is funny because we have the other uh, ESP32 board, and I don't remember if this is PoE. I don't think it is, but this is an ESP32, and this one is by Lilygo. This is the, oh, it is PoE. This is the uh, Lilygo XY iNet PoE, and um, the, the thing is, I decided. Um, I wasn't going to use this board after I got it. And, you know, you can see here the quality, not quite as good, not quite as clean as something like this one. But um, I'm a little torn. We'll see. I want to use them in real life. So, you know, we'll stop. But this one cannot be programmed directly over the USB. You need a programmer. Uh, you either need to make or buy a programmer to program it. And uh, the other thing about these is they are not available in the same quantities that I can get, um, or at least as quickly as I can get these. So even if I order these from Europe, they ship in in three days DHL, where these, uh, this one got here relatively fast, but they can be up to a month and on my favorite sites like Banggood and stuff like that, you know, they might have one or two in stock at a time. So um, I may do a showdown of these, I guess since I have them both, I didn't expect to get this one for a really long time. Um, so we'll see, I may do a showdown of my two ESP32 uh, PoE boards, because this is PoE also. And you can see they did their own little uh, isolation where they cut a trace in the board and bridged it with, I'm guessing a capacitor or something like that. Uh, so anyway, I haven't heard anything bad about this board, but I decided on my big project that I was going with this one. All right, next up, we've got one that just feels like AliExpress. Got AliExpress kind of all over the packaging. And oh, what do we have here? We have a bunch of chips that I was not expecting to get in a, uh, just kind of shoved in an envelope. Let's see if it says what it is on there. Uh, otherwise I might need some magnification for these jokers. So I went and grabbed the magnifiers because these things are um, in interesting condition. These are AliExpress. The chips were 18 cents a piece, but as you can see, they have different shaped uh, graphics. Some of them look like they had stickers pulled off them. I mean, they are clearly uh, recons, which actually sort of makes me think I should try to read them and see if I can figure out if there's anything on them. Now they may have cleared them off, but these are um, one meg flash ROM chips. And so, uh, again, the price was not too bad, uh, but I have been really, really disappointed with some of the AliExpress stuff I've gotten. And this is uh, clearly, uh, used or pulled or something like that. So I don't know. Have you guys ever had that where you've, you know, the, the sale was not listed as being a refurb, but this is clearly, uh, a refurb. So we'll see. Uh, I may try to bust out my EEPROM programmer and we'll see if they've got anything on them. But in the meantime, let me grab another package. And we've got this thing here. You can feel the paper. Ah, this is a uh, wall stud finder and moisture meter. Moist. 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 Um, this is, uh, now I do have over here, I do have another standalone moisture meter and I was just looking for a quick stud finder for the office. I have one that I can use, uh, that I use on the go, figures nine volt. Um, I have one that I use on the go, but this one uh, is gonna stay around here because I'm always using my Wallabot, which is one of those like, uh, um, 
you know, see through the wall type things. And it works really well, but it's just, it's a lot for like a quick one off thing. So, um, I wanted to have one that I could just have handy. And this has the benefit of also having the moisture meter. Now doing construction, uh, when I show up to a place, you know, you see stains on the ceiling. What I like to do is to take this little thing off and you take these little rubber things off and I probe in the wall and find out the moisture level of, um, you know, of what it is that I'm uh, jabbing. And so I guess you couldn't really see that on your screen, can you? Man, that's really hard for you guys to read. You can see the lights go crazy. Um, but yeah, you can't even read that on the screen, which is perfectly visible to me. Uh, but anyway, the idea is that if I come across some drywall or something like that that looks wet, I can probe the area that looks wet and the area that's next to it and see if it's a recent leak or if it has fully dried out or whatever. So I thought um, for basically the same price, the, this is the best rated cheap non-magnetic stud finder on Amazon. So I thought I might as well get this and have the added bonus of the moisture meter handy with me. So I guess I need to grab a nine volt battery. Okay, so hey, hey I do use these uh, in nine volts as well. Um, I just, I used to buy batteries when I was, when I was traveling a lot, I would buy them from Sam's Club because I needed them nonstop when I did like a lot with microphones then I switched to rechargeables and now um, kind of back to alkalines for simplicity, which I probably shouldn't be. Uh, but, you know, on things like this, just pop one in there. Now I do tend to keep the batteries out of something like this if I'm not gonna use it very often. So uh, the obligatory, is it broken? Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it's saying there's a stud in there. So it's uh, it's not broken. Uh, let's take a look at the, man, you can't see that either. That's really weird. Um, let's pull off this moisture meter thing on here. So this does not have the little rubber caps. Can you guys read that? Let's see here. I'm guessing I have to change the mode. So you can barely see that that is reading 0%. And as I jab myself with it, I can see that it is reading 35, 36% moist. Um, so if you were wondering that I am officially, let's, let's find this out. I am officially, we're going to say 30.1% moist. I am officially 30.1% moist. Um, so anyway, this has really good ratings. Uh, I don't know. I'll use it every day and if, it, it takes me a while before these videos actually go live. So if I decide that I hate this thing, I'll definitely let you guys know. But I think it was like 25 bucks or something like that for it's, it's got some good weight to it has the little foam to protect the wall. Um, I mean, it doesn't feel like it would take a drop off a 20 foot ladder, but, um, <clears throat> overall feels like a quality device and you know, so we'll see. Next up, we, let's see here, I have a feeling we're thinking PCBs. Let's see here, we'll see. Um, oh, oh, oh. Wow, okay. So this is very well packaged. So, um, cut open just one of these right now. These are some good looking PCBs. Um, this is the Tandy three in one card. And um, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more uh, research on this card, but I actually have four of them here. And um, the idea with these things is that they um, provide serial, IDE, some extra expansion, and um, another 512K of RAM to the Tandy 1000 EX and HX, of which I have both. And so um, I got four of these because you have to order all the parts separately from Mauser. Um, you know, there is, uh, this is a 16550 UART, which would be to power this serial um, port over here. You need, this is a 28C64, which would be a 64K BIOS chip, um, ROM chip. 
and different things like that. So I kind of want to learn, like dissect exactly what this whole board is doing. As you can see, you go around the outside, you've got different chips to begin with 74, which those are all um, random logic chips. And you've got a 1.8432 megahertz crystal that sits over here. So I kind of want to get an idea of exactly how all this stuff is working. I think we've got some bus timing going on over here. And I uh, haven't done a whole lot of, um, you know, of circuit uh diagnostics like that but i'm kind of excited to to sort of reverse engineer how this board works but essentially the tandies did not have a uh, standard isa slot bus they had a pin header type bus which is in here and i don't want to take these out of the package but essentially the cards would go down there and then they would stack on top of each other in riser fashion but this one um is they call it the three in one because it has the compact flash to IDE adapter, it has the 512k of RAM, and then it adds a serial port so you can hook up a standard mouse to the Tandy 1000 EX or HX um, for good measure. So uh, I want to learn more about this card, and I'm going to build up all four of them. And I haven't decided I may um, I may sell or give away one or two of them, but I basically had to order enough parts to build them all out. So these. Uh, you know, to buy something like this on Amazon or on, uh, you can't get it on Amazon, eBay would be well over a hundred, it's like 150, $160, something like that. I don't know, somewhere in that range. Um, but building it myself, I'll be able to build it for around 40. Uh, so getting four of them for the price of pretty close to one is not bad. So uh, yeah, those are my cards and I got some learning to do. And I think we're near the end. This is the last one here. This, I absolutely no idea what it is. Still have no idea what it is. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, I thought I knew what it was. I see some chips on top or something. I see some cat there. Oh, batteries, okay. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna let these things go off to the side. These are, um, these are the little uh, 3.6, 3.7 volt um, nickel metal high drive batteries. If you've ever looked at any of the, uh, focus, if you've ever looked at any of the old computers, uh, a lot of them have these barrel style batteries on them. And a lot of them have NICAD batteries on them. And those batteries uh, tend to leak and just destroy motherboards. So motherboards from like the 286 through socket seven so the early pentium type stuff are just being destroyed at a just an amazing rate by these batteries leaking so whenever i get a motherboard i check it real quick see if i need to cut that battery off um because sometimes you can fix the traces and sometimes they're just too far gone but um these batteries are nickel metal hydride which will not stand up to as many charge cycles as a um as an ICAD, but they also will not destroy the motherboard when they're done. So um, I got a bunch of these cheap to replace on the old motherboards just to give you something somewhat period correct looking. Uh, they're a little smaller, but you know, they won't look out of place. And then all of a sudden we've got this thing here. Um, AliExpress has been combining my items. And so things have been taking longer to get here. Oh my gosh, what the heck is that? What the heck is this? What did I do? <laughs> I gotta go to my I gotta go to my listing. I honestly don't know. Um, the the posting was kind of weird. There were a whole bunch of different options, and uh, you know I know these things individually go for two, three, four bucks, and some of the other ones can go for five or six dollars. And uh, I guess what they did was they sent me um, for three dollars. I bought. I thought I was buying seven batteries, but instead I was buying seven sets of eight. Um, so, uh, I mean, I definitely like, I will use a bunch of these and I've got some other retro computing friends. Um, so yeah, I will definitely be passing some of these along to other people. But uh, eh, I, I got a lot of nickel metal hydride batteries uh, for old computers. So I think that's all I've got here. We've got some uh, stud finders. We've got some circuit boards. We've got some ESP32s. We have some clearly 
um, stolen chips and uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got these things here. So I don't know if this thing uh, is charging or not. I've got this thing here. I'm guessing it's just power. So it comes with some headphones. Let me see if I can hook up those headphones. Okay, so I know you obviously can't hear and I may try to get some footage of you got for this for you guys to hear. Um, this thing is extremely amplified to where like, but it's also not very loud. So it's kind of, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. So like, in other words, when you turn it up loud enough that you would actually be able to hear something like my heartbeat, if you were to turn around and knock it into this thing for like half a second, I think you could seriously do ear damage. Um, so it goes back and it goes basically between being like something you can't even hear to being so loud that I think you could potentially damage your ears. So, um, this is an interesting thing. Again, I was wanting it more for things like uh, trying to figure out where vibrations are coming from on bikes. And then occasionally, um, you know, something like you'll have a slab or something and you wanna to listen to try to figure out where water might be leaking under the slab. Um, I don't know that this is gonna be high enough quality uh, for that. So I think, I think that these things are borderline dangerous. Now I could see maybe possibly taking the thing apart and see if you can figure out how to do something with it to, uh, to limit it a little bit, maybe putting some kind of squelch on there or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly um, what I would do with this thing, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a no buy right now. And uh, so that's all I've got. I need to figure out somebody to give about 40 batteries to. And uh, yeah, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.